So this starts part one of replacing the uh, shocks and coil springs on this uh, Suburban, 2003 Suburban. It has the, the auto leveling shocks. Um, so here are the moved coil springs. I'll do some compare, comparing of these when uh, I get the old ones out. We'll kind of see if we count the coils, check the thickness, see how they compare. I've got KYB Monomax shocks and the Airlift 1000 thing. Yeah, Airlift 1000 uh, air bag setup. So, just to check the pre height to the hitch, we're about at 15 and a half inches, just under 15 and a half, right? Yeah, just under 15 and a half inches. So, we'll see how that compares once we get done. See if the new coils raise it up any. Um, it is sitting. I would say fairly level. It may be just a hair low in the back. Uh, and it, with that one, we've got one coil blown, or not one coil, one shock blown. This side, it looks like the back is a little higher. I, I'm pretty sure that side over there, yeah, the back to me looks higher on this side. We'll do some. Doing just some quick comparing real quick. This is the passenger side blew out. Passenger side shock. So right there in the middle, we've got 35, just under a half. Thirty-five and an eighth, so it's actually lower on this side. I don't know. It does not ride well right now. You can definitely tell the shocks are bad and it feels very soft in the rear. It definitely starts bouncing once you... So, let's uh, get it jacked up on some fans and uh, See what all we're gonna have to pull off to get these coil springs out. So we're up underneath, and you can see the oily mess of that one shock. I don't know if this one's leaking too. Anyway, they've got 175,000 miles on them, so one definitely needs replacing and. I'm going to replace both and the springs. So, it looks like what we probably will need to do, just taking a look under here, is, um, well, I've got it under on jack stand and then got some safety stands under it too. But, um, it looks like what we'll probably need to do is I'll put my jack back under the rear end, jack it up a little bit. We're going to undo these uh, sway bar end links, uh, probably right off the sway bar itself, not up there. And then once we get those off, I'm trying to decide where the best place to take them off is, probably right here. I think it'll slide out. If not, we'll undo them here. So, uh, once we undo the sway bar end links, I think we can undo the shocks. And I think that will allow the rear end to drop low enough that we can pull the springs out. If it doesn't, what we can probably do is uh, jack up one side at a time. So, like, put the jack under that side, jack it up so that it makes the rear end do like this. And... Uh, that should allow me to pull one side out, then go to the other side and do, this, do the opposite and pull it out. So, let me start off by getting the wheels off of it so we have better access to the shock bolts, 
all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'll, uh, like I said, I'll put the jack back under it so we've got, uh, just so we've got something supporting it. I actually may get the smaller jack, just in case once I undo it, it wants to drop further than this space right here. Uh, I want it to drop as far as it'll go, so uh, this jack's a little tall. I'll get my smaller one put under it, and that way um, it has the potential to drop further because this jack's all the way down. So let me uh, get started on this. All right, progress. So decided to um, just for the heck of it. I just undid the um, shocks, and once I undid the shocks, of course I had the uh, I had the rear end jacked up, and I ended up just using that jack since it was under here. Um, while I had it, once I removed the shocks, I went ahead and just let the jack down, and it was just far enough that I could get the spring out. So got one out. I just need to pull the other one out, but I guess I can show y'all get the springs out. Slide over there. Let me get my air hose out of the way. sixteenths bolts so it's just a little stuck one-handed both springs out I didn't get new rubber pads for them. I figured these were probably fine. They're a little smashed, but they're, the other ones are going to smash too. They're in good shape. Nothing wrong with them. So, there's one of our old ones. Here's one of our new ones. So, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine coils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven coils. So these have an extra coil. They're two extra coils. about an inch taller and let me get the micrometer real quick all right so I've checked them this one's about 15 to 20 thousandths thicker so it's slightly thicker and um, more coils so Slightly smaller around, it looks like. Hopefully, it doesn't cause a problem with the airbags. Let's see. So, we got about four and seven eighths. Got about four and uh, just under a half. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't cause a problem with the airbags. Let's see how big around these things are. Give me a second to open these. Oh yeah, we've got a problem. 
um, I'm not going to be able to put these uh, airlift springs on or airlift bags on. So, well, of course, always. So, a little bit here. What I think I'm going to do, I'll measure the inside of the springs. And I think I will tell, I'll email Airlift, tell them what I've got. You know, I've got a 2003 Suburban. I've got move, part number, blah, 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 springs on it. And I ordered, you know, the airlifts set up when I ordered the springs. And the, uh, the Moog springs are about half an inch, we'll say, just under half an inch, smaller. And so, tried putting the bags in, and uh, it's too tight of a fit. Um, even putting air pressure in it, um, this whole cre this crease, some, most of it comes out, but uh, when you drop it to about 5 psi, which is minimum pressure, it has this full crease still in it, so it's just not going to work. The bags are too big for the springs. But, I bet they have a bag that will fit it. So, um, I'll email them. I'm, I've heard they have real good customer service, so they can probably recommend that airbag that would go in there. Same height, but, uh, you know, smaller around. So, anyway, I, it looks like for this install, for now, we are just doing the springs and the shocks. Then later on, um, we'll do the bags. Now, I think I need to look. What I'll do is, uh, while I'm in here, I'll see if there's anything extra I need to do um, for the springs, for the for the bags. That would be easier with everything out. Need to make sure I have room to route the airlines. Yeah, plenty of room. And it doesn't look like I need to trim anything. Um, looks like we're all good. So, yeah, no problems. And it's really not that big of a deal because it's, I mean, it might be a little easier to get those bags in to spring out, but it's not much of a difference really. So let's proceed with the rest of the spring install. All right, so we're at uh, GM Parts Direct, and so I'm sure this is for one spring. But we've got the without premium ride, and that's this part number right here. And then, so that's the spring I want, the spring I have. I have is this one with premium ride that part number so then we search let's search eBay used. Hmm. It does fit a Tahoe. And there's the Moog Springs. Those look totally different from the ones I have. Huh. That is not a picture of the Moog Springs.
So let me find out. Let me see if I can find these from a junkyard. Alright, let me see what I can find. <laughs> 